And you find yourselves back in the entryway, standing before the last of the three doors set into that wall. The door that is about twice the size of a regular door. And Alicia is standing in front of it and turns to look at the rest of you. Well, shall we? Someone wished to open a large door. Yes, we were opening the last door. The last door. All right. Once upon a time, a child saved the world of fairy tales. His reward was a wish. The one who plots in the shadows saw an opportunity to tarnish the child's heart, whispering words of corruption to him. The child asked the king of fairy tales to grant the villains, accursed for centuries, a new life. This was to be their chance for redemption. This was how the villains became good. But any light needs a shadow, and in turn, the heroes became evil. At that moment, all fairy tales were shattered. step into an enormous greenhouse. The air is humid and filled with a dense yellow haze that makes it difficult to see more than a few meters ahead of you. There is a strong sweet smell of pollen that makes breathing difficult. The plants that surround you are ones you have never seen and feel fairly confident do not exist in reality, not even in the farthest reaches of the deepest, darkest rainforests. Further into the greenhouse is a strangely unpleasant squelching sound. I suppose that's where we have to head, then, isn't it? Towards that noise. Why would you suppose that? Perhaps someone is stuck in the mud. Or a rabbit is. That sounds bigger to me than a rabbit. The door is quite big. Perhaps the rabbit is also quite big. That would be... something. I'll be I'll go I'll lead the way. And as you walk farther, you cannot see very far ahead of you. As you progress, two patients suddenly appear and are charging towards you. However, you realize they are not actually running at you but are running away from something. Chasing them is a massive caterpillar over two meters long. Before you can react to the bizarre sight, the caterpillar overtakes them and with a sickening crunch, bites into the head of one of them who spasms and then falls limp. The caterpillar begins to leisurely feed on his body while the other patient continues to run, screaming. I think we should back away slowly before it notices us. Still need the rabbit. Fine by me to not be seen by that thing. But don't we need the rabbit? I'll look for a rabbit, but that's not a rabbit. There. I think I spotted a rabbit. It was hopping into the mist over there to the left. Don't move. You're not sure, but there was like an incredibly blink of the eye blur. He's standing where he was with the paper in his hand, which he holds out to hook. <laughs> I'm really quite good. How did you do that? It was all the way over there. I can sometimes, when I so choose, obtain things. 
and sometimes obtain things from people that do not want me to obtain things. Oh, that reminds me, Hook. Baba Yaga has one of your coins. Which one? I used it to find you earlier. You may have it back, or you may let me keep it in case we need to locate you again. I mean, you used it to locate him. Hey, which which one? Is it the gold one with the rubies? <laughs> Piper is staying very quiet about this whole thing now. He is trying to pass this particular buck. Alicia is looking as though she's starting to get impatient and she'll say, well, what does it say then? It is, to po it is polite to ask if someone is home before you knock. What? That doesn't make any sense. How do you know if they're home? <laughs> Once you arrive at a door, it is polite to ask if anyone is home. So our instructions are... Ask if anyone is home. Then knock on the door... With... Something other than your hands. Or do we knock and then ask? Because this is the last door. That is correct. Do we know which order the instructions are meant to be done in? There's no set way to go through the doors, so you can probably do it any way, right? Says the GM telling us not to worry about the small details like that. <laughs> uh, well, which coin is it? It is a silver coin. So where's the gold one with the ruby, Piper? I do not know what you mean. I would speak to, um... I would see Felix. The rumor amongst some of the hunters is he has rather light fingers. I, I don't know who Felix is. I'm going. And Alicia is gonna turn away and head back into the mist. Follow. I was going to do that anyway. You make your way back through the mist. Before you reach the door, you do stumble across a rather unpleasant sight of some partially devoured carcasses filled with glistening piles of what look like large insect eggs. But as there are no caterpillars in your way specifically, you are able to safely reach the entranceway. Those poor souls. This whole place. Needs tearing down. Alicia is standing over the painted door, looking at it. So, what? Ask if anyone's home and knock? That is... what I was thinking. Is there a knocker anywhere? Anything we could use to knock on the door? No, but it's on the floor, so if you're not supposed to use your hand, she sort of stomps up and down on the door. I'd call that a knock. Is anyone home? Alright, and as she has tapped with her foot on the floor, and you have asked that question, for a moment you think nothing has happened, and you go through your head, maybe it was a different order, maybe we're missing a step. But then you notice that the door no longer simply looks real. It is real. Alicia will tug the handle and the door opens out from the ground. And below it is a staircase descending down into darkness. The hook will lead the way. Alright, I have satisfied my curiosity. Let us go. You reach a room, and it is huge, but it's hard to tell exactly how huge, as an unnatural darkness blankets the room, making it difficult to see the walls. Soft cushions are strewn across the floor, and the air is warm and still, almost soporifically so. Near the stairs is a rack of clothes in varying sizes, and a table piled high with breads, cakes, and fruit. Farther into the room, through the strange murky light, you can just make out a table 
which appears to have three figures seated around it. A voice, slightly muffled by distance and all the soft surfaces, can be heard coming from that direction. Head in that direction. James will also head in that direction. As you get closer, you are able to see better and you find a table set for tea with mismatched cups and saucers and far too many places for the three occupants or perhaps really only one. At the head of the table sits a short man with a shock of white hair partially hidden by a very tall hat. He is dipping a pocket watch in and out of his cup of tea like a tea bag while enthusiastically speaking to the other figures. They are not very attentive, being as they are a metal automata. Gears whir and turn in their forms, one shaped like a rabbit and the other like a lizard. The man pauses his speech for a moment to look at you, then continues. Now, as I was saying, she always complained that my riddles were nonsense with no answer, but not so. Now, to illustrate, I am sure one of these uninvited guests can tell me, why is a raven like a writing desk? Piper, why is he the director of this place? He could be. He, he doesn't seem the most grounded person. He is looking at you, waiting for a response. Oath. We cry uh, intelligence. Both have use of a feather. One to fly and one for a quill. And one is difficult to keep contained and the other can be captivating if it's not contained. He gives a deep and disappointed sigh. Quite quite wrong. See, it is, as all things, dependent upon the respective qualities of the raven and writing desk in question. Consider, you, child, may have a writing desk that has sprouted feathers, or you, my friend, may have a raven that makes an excellent surface to write upon. You see? Quite. You should have told us those parameters in your riddle, otherwise it is impossible to know the answer. Impossible. That is just what she said. Well, anyway, anyway, my dear friends, it is a pleasure to speak to people with skin and hair and the ability for speech. What brings you to my tea party? You mentioned a girl who said it was impossible. We're ah, looking yes. for her. She, what? You want her? Well, she's here. She's everywhere. She runs the whole place. She's the director. Who's the... I was speaking of the director. I don't know who you are speaking of. What is the director's name? I don't know. She's a doctor. A rather brilliant doctor, they say. Now, they always said I was a rather brilliant inventor, too, you know, but... Now, the line between genius and madness is, is quite, quite, quite thin. As thin as a, a saucer. A musical note. Quite so. So, she, she built this place. Well, she didn't build this place. I, I built this place. I'm an inventor, you know. And I, I made all of it possible. And yet, what does she do? She imprisons me, here. For use in further projects, she says. Expansion, if required. And she never comes to see me anymore. It is so, so lonely down here with only these. And he gestures the automata. And he blows his nose on the tablecloth, which you see is some sort of blueprint scribbled all over with drawings and writing. 
And what is it that you create? Create? Uh, create? Well, anything. Anything and everything. Really, really, really what I quite like is time. Time and now time. Time is very curious, but if you can get along with time, you can make time do as you wish. If you are friends with time, why? If, say you, well, if you are at a hard day of work, beginning of the day, very, very long day of work ahead, terrible, quite, quite terrible. Well, if you're friends with time, you simply snap your fingers and it's done in a twinkling. And are you friends with time? Me? Yes, well, sometimes time and I aren't getting along quite as quite as much as late, which is why it's always tea time, and I am afraid I'm I'm running rather low on tea. Would you like some more tea? I feel I should drink or eat something, but the great question is what? Well, may I offer you more tea? Well, what tea? This tea. And he gestures to several cups on the table full of tea, including the one he's been dunking a watch in and out of. No, I will bite. Not the one with the watch, though. One of the cups without the watch. And he pushes a cup of tea towards you enthusiastically. Please, have some more. James will drink it. Would you like to get out of here? Why, yes, of course. But that's quite impossible, you know. Why? Well, because I'm trapped. How? Well, because she put me here, you know. How do you think we got in here? I haven't the slightest idea. Perhaps you could come out the way that we went in. Oh, no, that would be certainly impossible. You see, I know every nook and cranny of this place. I know everything there is to know about it. I know every secret, every doorway, every hallway. And I know that it is quite impossible. Has anyone else been down this way? Oh, yes, yes. You see, this is this is all part of the treatment. For who? For the patients. They're not doing so well. Well, no, not at the stages you may have seen them at. No, no, not not at all. Well, <sighs> there are the, the three cure rooms and the patients they must traverse through the hardships of these rooms and through that they find the secret to get through this door and they, they come down here and then they may eat and drink and and put on some clothing and then they fall asleep and then as they sleep the director she comes and she takes them along to the next stage of treatment which is what why that's uh well that's uh, I have never been there that is her own domain that she knows she knows how to get there she does one person that has ever got out of this place. Well, well, I would not know. I am down here. Alone. Well, not quite alone. I did build these two, but they're <laughs> not very talkative. Is this shy? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, it's my own blend of tea. I tried experimenting with tea. I thought perhaps I could invent... A new sort of tea. However, uh, well, some of them worked and some of them didn't. It turns out there are some things one should not mix with tea. Quite. Like time, for example. Time? Uh, well, no, that doesn't blend very well with tea. That's more of a... Time goes very well in soup. Would you like some more tea? Oh. Uh, and he pushes a teacup? Across to you. Convinced he's stark raving mad. He's just trying to re work out if he would be good for the order or not. As now he's starting to wonder if his job isn't so much fixed mysteries, but rather recruitment. I was saying, I've been here for a very long time, and I shall sit here. I shall sit here till perhaps tomorrow. Or perhaps the day after that. And, well... Thank you very much again for coming to my tea party. The pleasure was ours. What can Alicia... you tell us about this woman that is the director? Oh, she's brilliant. Quite quite brilliant. Did I mention brilliant? Uh, yeah. Oh, and I'm brilliant as well. Uh, she is a doctor, and she had me build this place. 
She used to come visit me sometimes, you know. We had such wonderful conversations, but I have not seen her in quite some time. Changed. I think she's very busy. Very, very busy. You see, when I when I built this place, we didn't we didn't have any patients yet, but now there's patients and I expect they take up all of her time. How can we find the director? Well, she'd be where she is. Which is where? Oh, I told you, I've never been. But you know every nook, cranny, corner, corridor, passage, yes, roof, yes, door. Yes, certainly I do. So you know where she is? Yes, of course, she's behind the mirror. The mirror? Yes. Now we're getting somewhere. Are we? I thought I was sitting quite still. This man is quite mad. Yes, but he is, he is also a genius. He's quite right. Alicia's looking simultaneously confused, worried, and getting to be a little frustrated. And she will say, Look, we need to get to wherever the patients would go from here. So how do we get through that mirror? And he looks at her as though he's not actually noticed her sitting there. And he says, Oh, my dear, welcome, welcome, have some more tea. And she says, how can I have more tea? I haven't had any yet. I surely cannot take any more. He says, Ah, well, you're quite wrong. You cannot take less. And she sighs in exasperation, but he does resume. To get through the mirror, it's, it's quite, quite, quite simple. All you've got to do is stand in front of the mirror and recite the formula. And what is the formula? Oh. You want to know? The, the formula? Why? So that we could go through the mirror. Have a discourse with the director. And why would you want to do that? We need to find Alyssa. Who? One of the patients. We need to talk to her. Oh, well. Most of the patients are back if you go, um... You said you came down some stairs, so if you went up those stairs and uh, there's some doors... I built the doors, you know. I thought it was quite clever how they're all... Anyway. Uh, most of the patients are, are through those three doors. We did run into them. And... So your Alyssa's probably her. there. You didn't... didn't see her. Oh. Well, if you didn't see her there, then she's probably with the director. Which is why we are trying to... Oh, quite. Uh, what did you want to know again? The formula, if you please. Oh. Well, you see, I'm not entirely sure I want to tell you. Well, why not? We've given you a gift of our time and our companionship. Quite so. And I wouldn't wish to lose that. Only be gone for a little bit. We'll return soon enough. Well, so you say. But that's what she said. You could always come with us. <laughs> of course not. It is quite impossible for me to leave. Have you tried? So you say. Why would I try? It is simply impossible. But how are you so sure if you have not tried? To put effort into attempting the impossible, well, that would quite simply be madness. Suppose it would be, wouldn't it? Yes. That is the first sensible thing you've said, child. So, I am quite pleased with your presence here, and if I tell you the formula, well, then you will leave me. So, it seems quite logical to me that I should not tell you. Well, if you have nothing to offer us, then I suppose we shall leave. Why? You could try, but... I, I... I could stop you, you know. I am rather clever, you see. And I am quite certain that I could. Well, why put time into the impossible? I believe myself to be very good at... Estimating what is and is not impossible. Well, that's where you're wrong. And his fingers are drumming on the table, and he seems to be getting 
agitated. Her work, fascinating. And I would like to converse with you more about the many ideas you have about, well, all things. I appreciate art, as well as the thin line that exists sometimes between genius and madness, and whether one can exist without the other. But at the same time, we do need to complete what we were sent to do. And what is that? Find Alyssa. Ponders this. It's hard to have a casual conversation when we have such pressing business to attend to. The end is never the end. The end is never the end. The end. It's an infinite cycle. Mm. He sighs. He looks rather defeated. But he stops drumming his fingers on the table. And he will look at you and say... <sighs> beyond the madness. Beyond the basement. Beyond the mirror. Is that the formula? Yes, I thought that was clear. Or do you want something more from me now, child? What is it? And the rabbit automaton turns its head slightly. And the lizard's tail is sort of twitching. May I see your lizard? Uh, you can. Yes, yes, you can see it. It's right there. It's not gone invisible, has it? It has not. I meant, oh, can then I yes, inspect yes, it Yes, 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 you can see it. Well, if you wish. Labiaga will inspect the lizard. It is a large, mechanical lizard. It is the size of a person sitting in a chair. It does not seem as though the lizard or the rabbit have any sort of consciousness. They do not seem as though they have been instilled with any form of life. They are merely mechanical creatures. Makes sense. Well, if that's what we need to get going, then hadn't we better go? Yes. We will speak again. And Piper tips his hat. I hope you mean it, as I fear I am running rather low on tea. Perhaps you might ask her if she would let me leave? I will see what I can do for you. Very well. And he turns back to his two mechanical companions and launches into a rather exhilarating story about three sisters who lived at the bottom of a well and drew all sorts of things that started with the letter M and no longer seems to be acknowledging that any of you are there. I shall leave. You're then heading I will head beyond, up the stairs. beyond the stairs. That's where we are heading. And you come back up the stairs into the main entrance room. Beyond the madness, beyond the basement, beyond the mirror. And as you say the formula, a rectangle of the mirror before you mists over. and then seems to dissolve completely. Beyond it, you can see gleaming white surfaces at every turn. The floor, walls, furniture, and doors are all in white, and only by examining the doors closely can you distinguish them from the walls. I was merely thinking aloud. I expected it to be harder than this, and he steps through. If only we had thought to say that from the beginning. And Alicia will hurry through the now open door in the mirror. Babiaka will follow. And after you walk through what is a very bare and sterile environment for some time, you arrive in a large room. Along the walls are seemingly endless beds on which patients are sleeping. The room seems unnaturally still, and a distant ticking clock is the only thing that breaks the silence. Then, a door in the wall slides open and a stern, dignified-looking woman appears in front of you. Welcome to Wonder. I am the director. Greetings. Good afternoon. Hello, director. 
I assume you know why we are here? I have some idea. And Alicia is not really interested in the pleasantries and she's going to look at the director and say, where is she? And the director sort of looks at her and then does not even address her and will look to the group as a whole. And she says, I am happy to address your concerns. Please sit. We can talk over tea. She gestures to a table on which sits a teapot and cups. She herself sits and begins pouring tea. Curls of steam rise from the amber liquid and a delicate, refreshing scent wafts over to you. I believe we are all teed out. I am afraid I do not know what you mean. Please be seated. I but we'll sit. Excellent. She will pour him a cup of tea and place it in front of him. And she will turn to look at the others. It is not very civilized to refuse a polite invitation. It is also not very civilized to have your wards run around not having any food or dignity. It is rather a self-guided stage of treatment. I believe you are referring to it is up to them at which point they make it through. They have to learn to open their minds to see beyond. It is unfortunate that not all of my patients are able to properly progress through the stages of treatment. However, it is necessary to cure them or well, not necessarily to cure them in the way that the world would like them to be cured. No. <sighs> I became a doctor. For one reason, and one reason alone. It was to help people like me. Insane people, then. Some would say. Ever since I was a child, I saw the world differently. I would tell my family about all the things I saw and the places I had been, and to them, it was madness. To me, it was not. They tried to cure me on their own, you see. It is rather shameful for a noble family to... Have a mad child, you know. So they did what they could. Now, their treatments were rather, shall we say, experimental. However, over time, I learned. I, I saw beyond. I did not become what they wished, but I learned how to appear so. I went to school. I became a doctor, a rather celebrated one, and I established this place to help those like me. Those who die here would surely have died outside as well. Have you seen the patients that are brought to me? They are abandoned by their families. They are... <sighs> they are hopeless, and I am doing what I can to help them, to help them see beyond. James will. James is having a seat? He will. All right. Uh, then the director will pour him a cup of tea. And Alicia, seeing that two out of the three others have sat, will also sit and a cup of tea is placed in front of her. Please, child, I understand your frustration, but do you really wish to have a tantrum and stand there alone? I don't trust you. Nor I you. But I am hoping that we can come to some sort of peaceful solution here. I want you to disband this place. That is a rather naive thing of you to say. 
I will not. This place is everything to me. You're almost as humble as Piper. Mm. I am sure you have noticed the peculiarities of this place. It was rather brilliant architecture. I hired the very best, you see. You were able to gain entrance because I allowed you to. Did I not wish to? You could not have gained entrance. Wonder will protect itself, you see. If you try to break down a door or tunnel through the wall, it has ways of dealing with that. If you try and move things from room to room, it has ways of dealing with that. Ah, uh, yes, the lynx. Oh! I would say you've met Cheshire, but I know you have. Cheshire, as in the place from England. Cheshire is the name of my faithful lynx. What made you settle on that name? It seemed right. It reminded me of something. Did you grow up in Cheshire? No. My first concern is Alyssa. Alyssa! Yes, of course. The most stubborn of my patients. Has created quite a stir outside. Well, she is certainly the first patient that anyone has been sent to retrieve. And we have. That is true. She is not yet cured. I do not believe she is mad. Nor do I. Alyssa proved rather resistant to my usual methods. Therefore, I rather expedited her process. I moved her straight here from, well, almost as soon as she arrived, forgoing the normal passage through the cure rooms. I have been, as of yet, unable to practice my normal procedure. What exactly are your cure rooms curing? They help allow people to see beyond. Beyond what? Beyond everything. You see, when one is mad, or believed to be so, it is not important to be cured in the way that, well, many would would wish you to be, it is important to be able to see beyond your madness. That is what I am attempting to help people do. Please, have some tea. I'm not having any of your tea. Why not? It's rather delicious blend. Black tea and lemon. May I have another cup? Um, has James drunk any tea? Yes. Oh. Then I need you to make a roll. Of course. What were you doing? <laughs> you need a seven, and I'm afraid you don't have anything that would make this a base of three. Kieran! In <laughs> <laughs> character, you would have. Anyone would actually drink. All successes! Okay, wow. so um, you drink the tea, and it tastes very nice. You notice a flicker of confusion, perhaps, cross the director's face as you take a sip of tea and ask for more, and she will pour some more into your cup. Delissa. I would rather not part with her just yet. However, if your young friend there would take the idea of destroying my creation off the table, I could perhaps be persuaded. I am not unreasonable. Those that society has cast away and forgotten, they would be perfectly happy for them to rot here. You know, they do not care if they live or die. The girl you are seeking, how many months did it take for her parents to even realize she was not corresponding with them anymore and that is 
the apparently cherished child of a noble family. How do you think the rest of my patients fare? How many people are knocking at my door asking for their return? I am trying to help these people see beyond so they may return and live a better life where they are not cast away, locked in an attic, not scorned by their families. I would like to believe you. Has anyone ever left this place? Of course. I did meet someone who had been here. Her lack of recommendation was quite telling. But yet, you have proof that what I say is true. People leave when they are ready. Why did you drug the tea? She sighs and she says, That is the normal course of order. Well, not quite. Normally, patients would already be asleep when they come this far. We are not patients. You are here, are you not? And you seem to have some misunderstandings. I believed I could perhaps clear them for you. Well, so far you have not. So Alyssa has not spoken to her parents or Alicia or anyone else. Because she is asleep. Right. She cannot wake until she completes her treatment. What does completing her, her treatment entail? When it comes to Alyssa, her parents' main concern was a rebellious spirit. I have been attempting to quell that. However, she is quite stubborn. She needs to realize that one that may be quietly rebellious, if she were so, her parents would not have placed her here. She could return. They are satisfied she is cured, but she does not have to change. That is my objective. If she can see beyond her youthful rebellion that she can strive for what she wants without making it quite so obvious. She would not have been locked away, you see? I understand the concept. I do not understand the death. The environments that make up the cure rooms contain some hazards. They need not end in death. They are important. They help people understand that this is important and they create a sense of urgency. They help break down the mind so that it may be built back up again. Perhaps we are just ignorant, but we have not seen any of the building back up again part. Why, you said you had met someone who had been here. Does she seem to you mad? Yes. If I'm honest, she's complicated. Well, everyone is complicated. And at that point, it's their own fault. What of you, she says, looking at Alicia, is painfully normal. The other three are not. You are less out of place here. Why is that? Forgive me. I suppose I am asking you to disclose personal information. I have not yet even asked your names. James Henry Hook. A pleasure. She looks to the others. I'm Alice. Dr. Alice Little. Alice of other worlds. Back when they thought I was crazy. You seem very driven. I do, but I must. How many patients die here? I have not kept a record. That many? Does that not strike you as failures if the 
real purpose is to let them get to the point where they can return to a more fulfilling and happy life. Sacrifices must be made. In any other institution, they would simply sit there and rot. Here, there is at least the chance to leave. Is it really so much worse than a torturous eternity in a squalid institution? Abandoned by all who you ever knew, at least a quick death is quick. No, it's not better. Neither. Two wrongs do not make a right. And he sits there going, God, I do actually dislike that Platitudes book. If you are as brilliant as your Mad Hatter downstairs is. If Mad Hatter... He's quite a genius. Quite mad, but he's quite a genius. If you're half the... intellect that he is, you could be succeeding here without... the death. My methods are as unusual as they must be. I... Are failing. No, I cannot do. I cannot cure people in the normal way. I do things the way I must. And she stills for a moment, and her eyes are staring off into space, and then out through one of the walls walks the lynx, and it continues where she left off, and says, My methods are not quite usual. In any normal institution, I would be unable to practice. I would be unable to help anyone. But yet you have someone who is brilliant. Why can you not, with that brilliance, find a better way do not know a better way have you tried? tried i am doing what i know how you must suffer and then you overcome this is how i learned but if you're trying to be better than that you cannot be causing the same harm and what would you have me do i <laughs> I don't have a problem with your establishment as long as it helps people. I do have a problem if people are dying. What does that make us? That would make us no better than you. But you're not showing us this solution. You're not showing us your successes. What have you sacrificed? Everything. Well, go on. Don't keep us waiting. They called me Alice of Other Worlds as a joke because I was crazy, but I had friends and experiences and places that to do this, I had to agree. I had to say I was crazy. None of it ever happened. You were right. And now I'm cured. I'm better now. I believe it was all a lie. I made it up. I was a crazy child. I had to give up everything that I had in order to help people. How many patients have you cured? I have not kept track. Some come, some go. If more died than left, I assure you, I would have given up by now. I have a requirement and a suggestion. I am listening. The requirement is I did, in fact, promise the Hatter that I would converse with him again at some point. I would like you to be able to allow that to happen at a later date, so that I have not lied to him. He may speak to you whenever he wishes. Good. Then I am not a liar. And as I'm not a liar, then, I am suggesting that if you would work with the order of who we represent, as I feel while your methods are perhaps maybe a little misguided, your 
desire to help is not. There is some of the leading philosophers and medical individuals who are associated with our order. They may be able to give you ideas, guidance, different ways of approaching things that you in your own way will be able to adapt and possibly be better, achieve what you need to achieve. Sacrifice does not always mean the ultimate sacrifice. They may be able to help you find ways to achieve that end without the breaking of so many eggs for the omelette. Do you seriously want to recruit her? Yes. She she has no regard for human life whatsoever. We recruited the blue-eyed demon, did we not? Her and the wolf were already rampaging and had already killed before we arrived. We had no problem recruiting her. Her usefulness has proved valuable. Yes, but she showed remorse. Alice here doesn't even realize what she's doing is pure evil. Yet? There is nothing evil about trying to help people. I already told you it is regrettable that some were not able to see beyond. The lynx stalks back over to the table and sits next to it and it closes its mouth and Alice herself resumes talking. <sighs> the Order is used to unusual things. We are not quite flesh and blood. No. So to summarize, the patients would all be free to leave. Not only if they wished, but out of necessity, as if I and Hatta are to visit with your Order, there would be no one here to watch over them at all. That may be arranged to have some care put in place. The patients here would need somewhere to go. Alyssa, you came specifically for so she could leave with you. The rest I do not know, but if you will agree to leave this place as it is, I will let the patients leave and I will try with the help of any experts you may know to refine my methods so I may return someday in a more effective capacity. Does that sound agreeable to you, Baba Yaga? <laughs> Good. I will make you specifically, if you will let this place stand, a promise, child. And she looks at you and says, I will not resume treating patients here until such a time as those gathered here feel that it would be beneficial to all involved for me to do so. If I promise you that, will you agree? Fine. I agree for now. Excellent. Then I suppose we shall go awaken Alyssa. And Alicia jumps eagerly to her feet. And Alice will lead the way over to one of the beds. Where a young woman is lying. And she looks to be not sleeping particularly peacefully. Her blonde hair is sort of plastered to her forehead with sweat. And she slightly tosses and turns and Alice will walk over to the bedside, look down at her, place a hand to her forehead and her eyes will open. And she is looking up at a group of people gathered around her and she's a little confused. Alicia, uh, I guess that is a pleasant surprise. I don't know who any of you are, though. That is not important. What is important, you need to write a letter. And she looks at you confused? To your parents. I see. Do not worry, you don't have to return. They would like you to be returned to them. We were charged with making sure that you were safe. Now, Alicia here, I believe, would like you to leave with her. I 
am willing to not oppose this, but I do need to make sure that the key part of my mission is fulfilled. That is, if you leave here, where are you going to go and that, that you will be safe? Alicia reaches down and, and grabs Alyssa's hand and she's looking very relieved and like she might burst into tears, but she's going to try her best not to because she thinks Alyssa is probably already overwhelmed enough that not having her there sobbing, uh, probably not for the best. So she will look at you. I I don't know exactly where where we will go. I honestly, I hadn't put much more thought into it than than finding her and leaving i i didn't even know i'd get this far there is always room at the order um she looks at you a bit puzzled and says uh from what i'm told um that's a place for people who are can do um well when when you were talking to her and she points at alice and she was a cat I think you said the people at the order were used to that kind of thing and um me and her well we can't be cats or anything they're used to it not all of them are that way Alyssa uh, will squeeze Alicia's hand and, and look up at you uh the Order is affiliated with the Church, is it not? Yes, I, I was trying to somewhat avoid this particular conversation with my companions, but it seems that they're not... Um, I am just clarifying. It's well, up to them. It, if it is affiliated with the Church, perhaps you could inform my parents that I had relocated to a church facility, uh, you could stop short of saying become a nun. However, if you implied it rather heavily, that is at least a respectable calling, if not True. expected. It does not, however... Alleviate my concern. I need to know that you will be safe. If you two go from here and six months from now are living on the street starving to death, that has not fulfilled safe. Oh, but it did sound as though your friend there was offering us a place to stay. Yes. Their arrangement is somewhat unusual. Would you not agree? I would. <laughs> no one needs to know of their arrangement, as you put it. I don't think it would be exactly a secret. Now, Father Matthias is a very forward-thinking individual. Do you think he's that forward-thinking? Oh, dear. Now, I fully realize that we operate in a very grey area. In some ways, we are the very things that... They preached against, and needs must, however, and here we are. If it would not do for us to stay there, I am I am sure we can find somewhere. Glances over to see if ba Baba Yaga was actually just flicking through the Book of Platitudes. <laughs> what you said is indeed true. We are not fully of your world. The church does turn a blind eye on that because they need us. However, the church also does need to function as the order does. It needs skills. And they're looking at you. I need someone with a good hand. I do not like writing reports and they have so many. They have to go into books and it is somewhat understaffed. Alicia looks a little bit dismayed, and she says, Well, I never quite learned to, to write, but Alyssa, she, well, you know, she can. She was writing letters. And Alyssa says, If this order would 
employ us, then we would be more than happy to assist in whatever capacity we could, if you believe they would, in exchange, allow us to be as we are. I think we will need to apply just a little bit of pressure or leverage upon both the Order and your parents. So I have a suggestion. I would like you to continue to write to your parents. We will not tell them that you are at the Order, however. We, you can put... It would not exactly be far from the truth to say that you were following a form of religious calling. Your parents are difficult. She grins. And annoying. But they are not incapable of change. If you leave the door of communication through letters, then they should be happy that you are not here in this place. And if the situation in the future changes, then you can make your own decision. For the order, the church should be happy that the noble family is not unhappy. I could also, well, if my family believed that I had found a, a respectable calling, I am sure I could convince them to donate. Which would make the church very happy. The order likes its money. However, I do think James is correct that while Baba Yaga here can conduct her magical experiments and set Felix on fire and we can be somewhat flamboyant, I would not necessarily try to flaunt your relationship quite in the face of their beliefs, if you take my meaning. I do. When push comes to shove, the order gets shoved quite a lot by the church. That is also true. I will write to my parents. I will see what I can arrange by way of a financial contribution to your order. And I will happily write your reports if it means I no longer have to stay here and that I do not have to return home. I will give you some uh, forewarning. As you have experienced what it is we do firsthand, you were in fact the cause in this particular one. Not all of these reports that you will be putting down will be pleasant. I have seen some things here that were not particularly pleasant. I I'm sure. I'm sure I will manage. Excellent. She looks a little confused as to why the director is there and just sort of allowing you to talk about her leaving. Uh, but she's going to sit up and get out of the bed. And Alice is now going around and waking all of the sleeping patients. And she turns to you and says, I do hope that some form of arrangement can be made as there are several people who are going to need somewhere to stay now. He goes into, not a trance, but definitely feels like he's not now paying attention to the room and he plays a a tune Assignment 
completed. There are complications. Hunters recruited require carriages and and yeah and we need carriages and doctors for to aid in some of the in some of the treatment we'll report in full much much to discuss the things that are most annoying a baby yaga's fault and back in the order headquarters father mateo begins making arrangements he just sighs he, yeah, he probably This does. again! It's like, uh, <laughs> why did I send them? I say, you're the math of sick. And they He's say, from... no, no, they can He's help from... us. Maybe catch some of those chickens. We might have to cook some food for many people. Felix! He's asking for carriages. What have you let him do? Felix is like, I didn't do anything this time. I wasn't even in this one. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but the trouble rolls downhill. The Broken Tales RPG is released by the World Anvil Publishing, starring Ghost as Piper, SPG as James Henry Hook, Shadow as Baby Yaga, Emily is the storyteller, sounds and music by Sirenscape.com and Epidemic Sounds. You can find us at Critfail.com. <laughs>